Today, we're going to talk about VMware Tainsware Application Service and how it can be extended with the Cloud Service Broker for Azure. My name is Nick Kuhn, and I'm a Senior Technical Marketing Architect at VMware working on the Tainzu Application Service. The main question we are trying to solve is how can Tainzu Application Service enable developers to easily consume Azure native services? The Cloud Service Broker for Azure is here to help. With the Cloud Service Broker for Azure, developers can directly consume Azure native services and integrate them into their code from the Tanzu Application Service Marketplace via Apps Manager or the CLI. This enables your developers to spend more time writing code and less time dealing with tickets. The broker puts IT and platform ops in control of all the things. IAM roles, resource group configs, Azure credentials and service offerings are all controlled by operations and can be molded into your organizational guardrails. There is no need to grant everyone access to the Azure portal. Existing Tanzu Application Service RBAC config can be used to control who gets access and who does not. Chargeback or showback are achieved through automated tagging of services by the Cloud Service Broker on provision time. In our demo today, I'm going to show you how to use the Cloud Service Broker for Azure with the following steps. We are going to use the broker to deploy an Azure Redis cache directly from the Tanzu Application Service Marketplace. We will then take an existing Spring Music application running on Tanzu Application Service and bind it to the cache that we deployed. We will then show the Spring Music application reading and writing from the Redis instance. Enough slides, let's get on to the demo. As you can see here, I am logged into the Apps Manager, which is the main interface for Tanzu Application Service. Let's drill into the Marketplace tab. There are many Azure Native Service offerings to choose from. I'm going to select the Azure Cache for Redis Service Offering. In that, I'm going to select the Mini Plan. I'm going to give my service a name, and I'm going to click Create. During the creation process, the broker is talking to the Azure APIs to fire up the Redis instance on our behalf. Let's take a quick pause while the instance creates. Now that the provisioning is completed, let's check out the Azure portal to see how the cache looks on that end. In the Azure portal, you can see that the Redis instance has been created and has been named with the prefix of csp-redis. Custom naming can be provided if desired using an advanced parameter at provision time. Let's drill back over to Apps Manager and check out our application. I have already deployed a classic Spring Boot application known as Spring Music to the platform. We will use this to connect to our Redis instance. If we drill down into the Spring config, you can see that the application is currently running from an in-memory H2 database, meaning that there is no real data persistence as all data will be lost when the application gets shut down or crashes. If we flip over to the app route, we can see that the application starts with some default music albums. Let's go ahead and add a new demo album, knowing that we will lose the album if we restart the application. We are going to use demo for all fields and click OK. Let's scroll down to confirm the demo album loaded. We are going back to Apps Manager now to bind our new Redis instance to our Spring Music application. I'm going to bind an existing service to our application as we have already deployed our Redis instance. On the service dropdown, I'm going to select Azure-CSB-Redis-01 as that is the instance name that we provided. Let's click Bind. During the binding process, the broker is getting credentials for our application from Azure and securely storing them in CredHub, which is the credential management store in Tanzu Application Service. CredHub will then map these credentials directly to the application, and the Spring Boot framework will take care of mapping them correctly. Now that the Redis instance is bound to our app, all we need to do is restart our application for it to pick up the new database connection information. Let's restart the app. Okay, the application has been restarted. Now let's check the Spring information again. As you can see, our application is no longer using the H2 connection string, but now using the Redis connection type. Let's flip back over to the app route. You can see our original demo album is gone as it was lost when the application was restarted. Let's add a new demo2 album and confirm it's there. Now let's go back to Apps Man and restart our application once more. If we go back to the app route, we should see that the new demo2 album survived the restart as it was loaded from the persistent Azure Redis instance. In summary, we deployed an Azure Redis instance with a cloud service broker for Azure. The broker was then able to bind the Redis instance to our Spring Music application. Our Spring Music app was able to read and write the data from the Redis cache.
These steps show how the combination of Tanzu Application Service and the Cloud Service Broker for Azure enables developers to easily consume Azure services. Thank you. If you'd like more information on Tanzu Application Service or the Cloud Service Broker for Azure, please visit tanzu.vmr.com.